year ago, we, we began to think about uh, how this was playing in the wider world, and in particular how the mixed messages we were hearing. On the one hand, we were hearing from uh, government ministers, uh, Mrs. Cameron, Clegg, Ian Duncan Smith, and others, uh, talking with enthusiasm about the principles of the intervention. We were seeing things like the uh, big field report and uh, uh, the Allen report, the processes being set out. So these appeared on the uh, on the other, we feared, uh, rightly I think as it turned out, that uh, public expenditure cuts uh, would hit preventative services first and they would hit them hardest. So we thought that uh, choices made at, uh, over the course of the coming months would determine direction of travel not just for, for this year, but for years to come. So we gathered a task force around Christmas time who shared our interest in this, and in particular our interest in taking a rather longer term view and addressing the question, how do we build a society that prevents problems from occurring, rather than one that copes with the consequences. We didn't want to think uh, for two years in a darkened room and then produce a weighty tone that would just gather dust uh, for, for years thereafter, but rather to, to start a conversation to generate some action. And so this report, we hope, is the, the start of that conversation and of that action. Uh, we called it the triple dividend because we think that early action isn't only cheaper than later action and uh, important for social well-being, it also helps to reduce the deficit and to increase growth, driving lives, costing less, contributing more. And that, of course, is why this topic might not be new at this time, but it is so, so timely. And we begin uh, the report with language, which might seem like a bit of an indulgence, but language shapes ideas, and ideas drive action. The conventional language of prevention, avoiding the worst, presupposes problems, victims, perpetrators. It's pessimistic, reductive, and discouraging. The language of readiness, becoming the best that we can be, identifies assets and builds on strengths. It's, it's optimistic, aspirational, and motivating. We envisage a society that is ready for everything, characterized by enabling services that equip us to flourish, and by prompt interventions respond to the first signs of difficulty. And in the report, we discuss what works. We draw out some lessons from some of the most successful early action projects of the third sector and from government initiatives. These case studies are now uh, available online as well. We talk a lot about the bureaucratic plumbing, spending rules, some of the perverse incentives that uh, Jonathan spoke about, organisational and departmental silos, the things that are, are blocking progress. We identify 12 uh, barriers which we think are particularly important, and we put forward a range of practical structural improvements. <coughs> I want to highlight just three of those, but I hope you'll have time to look at the others. First, we suggest that government should uh, consider developing early action transition plans with early action milestones, charting their progress on early action scorecards. For example, we spend 5% of our budget at the moment on prevention and early action. We aim to increase that proportion by 5% each year for the next three years. We say that these plans should be linked to Office of Budget Responsibility Growth Forecasts and Office of National Statistics Measures of Wellbeing. Early action contributes to fiscal sustainability and to growth, but work is needed to understand and to reflect that impact. We think the OBR should consider the impact of early action in its growth forecasts and in its fiscal sustainability report, and that the ONS should capture the impact also on and we further suggest that the Public Accounts Committee and the National Audit Office could help with better financial information on how much is being spent on early and acute action, the essential baseline of the plan, and on the barriers to delivering value for money. The committee must, might ask the National Audit Office to build on previous work with a cross-cutting value for money study focusing specifically on early action. But we are also clear that the triple dividend isn't just about government, and far from it. We talk, for instance, about transition planning across the third sector. Major funders might lead their own transition plans, challenging themselves and those they fund to consider the optimum point for any given intervention. Asking, is this at the right time? And if not, that, if, if not, how might we next engage one step sooner? We note that data collected for different funders has used different, different processes and indicators, underlining the validity of comparisons and conclusions, and we propose the development of a common core in monitoring and evaluation to help build knowledge, understanding, evidence, and ultimately the case for development. We talk about training and about pooling, commissioning, expertise. And 
we envisage an important role for business, suggesting a new approach to cope corporate social responsibility, asking first, what's the problem? Then, how do we unpeel the onion together and address the cause? And finally, we say this isn't only about rules or resources, but also about attitudes and culture, customs and practice, and most of all, about leadership within the sectors and across them. A few weeks ago, just down the corridor in the other place, the Secretary of State told the Communities and Local Government Committee Select, Select Committee that he'd just been given responsibility for community budgets, potentially important territory for developing early action, but one that has been more spoken of than acted on for 15 years. He was asked who was previously responsible. He replied, a little unguardedly perhaps, the Secretary of State for Good Intentions. <laughs> Looking back over numerous government reports extolling the virtues of early action, you might assume that uh, said minister had been pretty busy over the years. Good intentions abound, but too little else. Over the coming months, we want to achieve two things. First, practical support for a common goal, to become a society that's ready for everything. Not an objective for every organisation, of course, but one that could be shared by enough to be truly described as a national ambition. Second, a to-do list. Indeed, lots of to-do lists. For the actions that we might take individually, corporately, collaboratively, to achieve the ambition, worthwhile one by one, transformational in aggregate. A national ambition and a to-do list with some welly behind them both. I've spent all my working life in a frontline agency in East London. We don't have much time at Community Links for good intentions. Acting early isn't a new idea, it's not untried, but nor is it tinkering at the margins. Embraced enthusiastically, it's category shifting and life changing. Practical ambition, Please do respond to